Hi guys, I'm Ed Katushabe and welcome to video four of our insulin resistance series. Today we're going to be talking about achieving a healthy body weight and its impact on insulin resistance using exercise as your modality. What is the role of exercise in achieving good insulin sensitivity? So let's start by defining what exercise is. So exercise is prolonged physical movement over a period of time. This can be divided into high intensity or low intensity activities. So something as simple and as easy as walking for a couple minutes is considered exercise. It's purposeful, prolonged physical movement. Exercise can also be something as simple as moving around your house, cleaning, as long as you're physically moving your body. Higher intensity exercise is what we traditionally think of when we think of exercise, and these are activities such as jogging, running, weight training, and the like. So how exercise impacts insulin sensitivity goes down to a lot of chemical processes within the body. When your body goes into a bout of exercise, it requires energy in order to get moving. That energy needs to come from somewhere. Predominantly, it tends to come from blood glucose. Blood glucose needs to be supplied to whatever working muscles are working at the time to provide them with sustained energy for that bout of exercise. Whether the exercise lasts only five minutes or it lasts three hours, the body has a certain energy requirement it needs for that. Exercise uh, or consistently over a period of time helps your body become more efficient at providing itself with energy. So what tends to happen when you exercise consistently is your body increases its insulin sensitivity. It has a tendency to take all the glucose from the food you eat and instead of storing it into fat tissue for long-term storage, it has a larger tendency to store it as muscle glycogen for more medium and short-term use. Your body is much more likely to use glucose more efficiently and store it for much shorter periods of time, which increases your sensitivity to insulin. It does that so it always has a good store of energy for its demands. And that's how exercise sort of impacts with insulin sensitivity. Exercise also has a whole bunch of benefits in terms of your brain chemistry, um, some of the neural chemicals that are in your brain. It hardwires the brain to be more efficient at some of its processes, making you a little bit more mentally clear, a little bit sharper, it helps improve memory, and also helps improve mood. So exercise is one of those things that is a all-encompassing um, um, positive stimulus to the body. You can think of exercise as a stimulus. It is something that the body undergoes, the process the body goes through that it now needs to react and recover from. In the act of recovering from it, your body reinforces all the structures that were affected from the stimulus that it received and makes them a little bit more efficient at their job. So exercise is basically the uh, opportunity for the body to improve the way it works. Now, the downside of how the human body tends to work is the body uses a use it or lose it system. All the systems in the body that are used frequently become more and more efficient at their job as they get used and all the systems in your body that are not used become less and less efficient because the body doesn't see a need to keep their efficiency high. Think of your body like a, uh, like a company, like a corporation. The CEO, the brain is deciding where the budget is going to be spent. Certain departments that don't really do anything, they don't, get a, they don't do a good job, they barely show up to work, it's gonna take budget away from those departments. The departments that are high output, constantly on time, constantly doing their job, constantly, constantly demanding more resources, the, the CEO of the body, the brain, is going to dedicate more resources to those departments. And that's how the body tends to govern itself. The parts and systems that work most, most often receive more attention, more resources, and become more efficient over time. The parts that don't become deregulated, de-emphasized, budget gets removed from them. So that is how your body tends to work. So exercise needs to be something that you do consistently. The CEO needs to be convinced that it's worth putting in the time, energy, and resources into this department long term to be worth the amount of energy requirements it takes to improve those resources. So exercising really hard for a day will have some temporary benefits, but those benefits are not gonna be long lived. Exercising really hard for a week 
going to have some temporary benefits, but they won't be long lived. Exercising for a month will have much more benefits than exercising hard for a week, but eventually the body is going to realize the department used to be a high producing department. It's since been down regulated. We're going to take away from its budget and de emphasize it. So it needs to be something that you do consistently. Consistency when it comes to the human body is key. Your body only reacts to the stimuluses it gets on a regular basis. Anything that is a once off event, the body takes as a once off event, doesn't really respond effectively to it, doesn't see the need to pump those resources into it. So, so even, even something as, as, as seemingly um, low hanging fruit, like exercising once a week, as long as it's done regularly, once a week, every week for a year, the body registers that stimulus as being constantly recurring. The body has a need to make the systems involved in that stimulus more efficient. So exercise is one of those things that it's, it's best to, especially if you're going from not exercising at all, it's best to start small, give yourself little small targets. A lot of us, when we decide like, okay, cool, I would like to lose a little bit of weight. I would like to improve my insulin sensitivity. I want to start exercising. We go from not exercising at all to trying to exercise five, six, seven times a week for half an hour, an hour at a time. We try and go from zero to hero. Often the body isn't quite ready for that high a stimulus. The systems the body requires to recover from that high stimulus have not been uh, developed yet. They haven't been, they're not sophisticated enough yet. So oftentimes it's best to start off a little bit lower, but with intent. So starting off with from no exercise at all to I'm dedicating myself, I'm committing myself to exercising twice a week, every week for the next month. Once you get used to that, it is a stimulus your body can easily recover from. It's enough of a stimulus to get your body going into a nice groove. You can add a third day. You can add an extra 15 minutes. Whatever it is, whatever makes sense to you, whatever you feel like you're used to, it's about starting off in a reasonable, uh, obtainable goal and building up from there. Small little steps because consistency over the long haul is what's going to be the true key to success. A lot of people try and go from zero to hero a lot way too quickly and that is a, a, a bad strategy because if you're not exercising three months from now, then everything you gained until you stopped exercising, you're eventually going to lose anyway. The trick is to keep it consistent, keep it into a lifestyle. That's what's going to lead to the maximum amount of benefits. Your insulin sensitivity is going to be right up there as your body weight comes down because your body is less prone to store energy, more prone to want to burn energy off. It has to be something that is consistent over time. So that is the role of exercise with insulin sensitivity. It improves your body's own natural systems. Your weight is naturally gonna come down as long as it's balanced with great nutrition as we spoke about in the previous video. As your body weight comes down, your body has a tendency to be less inclined to want to store energy long-term in fat, store it in more medium to short-term uh, path, pathways like in the muscle fibers for immediately available energy and that improves your insulin sensitivity. It improves a whole bunch of systems within your body, it gets your body working a lot more efficiently. The company that is your body becomes a higher output company, greater profit margins, CEOs happy, dedicating the resources to the departments that are producing the most amount of work. Everyone is thriving, everyone's doing well. And that's how the body works. But no matter how successful the company is today, doesn't mean all that much if the company is not doing anything a month from now. It needs to be something done consistently. Even if it isn't a perfect system yet, the trick is to start small, slowly work your way up. Start with something achievable once a week, twice a week, three times a week, building up from there. Start with low activity exercise like walking, build yourself up to Pilates, yoga, hit sessions, weight training, cycling, whatever suits your particular interests and your particular body type, what you enjoy doing. As long as your body is moving on a consistent basis, that is how you are going to achieve the goal. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video series on insulin sensitivity. It has been awesome working with you, wishing you the best of luck in your fitness journey. Keep it consistent.